Marcia. So ready when you are, go ahead, Scott. Okay. Pam? Yes, I'm here. I hope so. <laughs> I, I didn't realize that you were a neighbor of mine. This yes, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, how are you? Yeah. I recognize the name, Pam. Where else have I been with you or been involved with you? Any other committees uh, or? I first. I, I ran. Were... Yeah, I ran for a countywide office back in the day. So a lot of people still remember me at running on the de Democratic ticket. I thought you were, at first, I thought you were a reporter. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Pam, we'll make this as quick as possible. And Thank you. Down to earth. Let's start off here now. You know what the purpose of Shade Tree Commission is? And what, yes. what, what do we use it for? Let's uh, let's start there. Well, the Shade Tree Committee, which I honestly hadn't heard about before, is to really do an inventory and make sure the trees in the city are uh, both healthy as well as, you know, help with uh, value of your property as well as providing shade, which also helps the electric bill. Mm -hmm. Okay. And... That is the, that's the purpose only of the Shade Tree Commission? That's how much I know so far. Well, we'll get you on here and we'll teach you some more. How's that? Awesome. <laughs> okay. Uh, where can we go from here? Where can we go from here? I'm here, Strat, as for, I'm as involved with the, as in the meeting, even though I'm not here in person, okay? I understand. I'm sorry, Marcia. Okay. Just oh, remember that this is a hybrid meeting, okay? And our next yes. one will be too. Pam, first of all, thank you for volunteering for the community. Uh, the Shade Tree Commission is so important to the city because we have an urban forest in the city. What do you think you can do? Because I know you always have your voice being heard. What can you do to advocate that we maintain this status? I really think the um, city residents need to be more educated exactly how important the trees are to the city. And also, um, I'd really like to educate the realtors and people who buy properties in the city that uh, they understand the importance of the trees. And what honestly what prompted me was two, two homes were sold in my immediate area, and the first thing they did was they cut down like 60 or 70 year old trees and right. it literally hurt me. And I'm like, how can that be possible? How can that be allowed? And I found out it's not. So I'm like, I really want to be involved to educate people on how important trees are and uh, how it hurts the property value of everybody in the, in the community when the trees are not there. So that's really what prompted prompted me to get involved and do some research on the State Tree Commission. I reached out to Lester. He invited right. me to the one thing. So I, I already, he already knows about me, Marsha. <laughs> well, Lester is a good person to connect to for sure. Uh, and I guess part of it with your uh, background in real estate, I think you made a good point that a lot of people don't understand. When I moved into my home, became a homeowner in the city, uh, I didn't plant a tree. It got planted there by a squirrel, which happened to be an oak tree, which uh, has since become enormous. And I never understood the responsibility of a property owner. So if the Shade Tree Commission could do things that are very proactive, both English and Spanish, for people to understand how to care for trees and how to work with the city around them, we wouldn't have what happened in your neighborhood. And absolutely. And these are, this was a, like a, 70 year old, 60 or 70 year old, we, the lo, the land, uh, the property owner was there when we first bought our house 13 years ago and he told us he planted it. So the neighbor moved in and the first thing they did was they cut down all the trees. I'm like, 
what? <laughs> so I, I just think it's important to uh, have realtors understand the importance of the trees and to be able to communicate that with the people who are purchasing the property, even if they're flippers, and a lot of them are flippers who do that for aesthetics, um, which I think that's awful what they do. So yeah, I'm gonna have to look at, I, yeah, I'll go on, sorry. That, that's what prompted me to get involved. Okay, and I, I think that, that is important as we have uh, changing homeowners, like you said, people that are flippers, that they don't want to necessarily respect what we are. And the other thing about Reading, which is really unique, is because we're surrounded by trees, trees make a home for themselves. Okay, and they'll grow where you don't want them to grow, and it needs to be how you manage that whole urban uh, forest. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, not even the habitat that's being destroyed. So um yeah a whole bunch of climate change a whole bunch of reasons to educate people on trees and by the way i've been experiencing over my last several weeks i've been immersed in being around trees to say the least so it's really putting me in touch with the topic for today awesome. pam and sometimes trees do some things that you don't want them to do uh when i first moved up in the, the 1500 block of linden street where i live I had a beautiful tree right in front of my home and something happened to my water pressure one day. I had to call the water company and they came out. Mm -hmm. Here, the roots from the tree have got, had gotten into the water line and it was really hurting me and I had to get the tree cut down. Well, I wanted a tree replanted and uh, I got a new tree and had it replant, uh, planted this tree and it was beautiful. It was growing and all of a sudden it just died. And I got another one, same thing. So I made up my mind, that's it, that's it. But we do yeah. have a lot, of, a lot of trees out in our district where we live and where you live. Yeah. And, and people are concerned with them. I know every day or every week I get calls about People are taking care of them or they're not taking care of them or with all this heat and everything else that they're so nice to have. But uh, well, you know what we're looking, you know what we're looking for in this commission and that you will be a tremendous asset being on this commission. Well, thank you have any, you so questions? Much. You have any very, questions for us? Well, I'm very proactive and um my, my one concern, uh, which was brought up already in that first meeting, was, well, how do we communicate that? And my, I said, well, we are, we're a city. We have, we have the water authority. Is, is, it, is it possible to work with other authorities and other groups in the city to help get the information out about the trees? I mean, you know, the water bills go out every, every month. So I'm going to be looking for everybody to work together on this. And I mean, you all, all probably know I'm pretty um, uh, persistent. So I really think with a group community effort through the city and the, the uh, different departments of the city, we can really make a difference in, in our city on the natural side and the nature right. side. So that's why I say you're going to be an asset to this commission. Let me ask you a question here. You know, when the commission meets? That's wrong. I'm not sure. I think, yeah, no, I, don't, I was at one, but I don't remember when we met. Well, what I'm concerned with, you won't have any problem meeting. They meet on the third Thursday of each month at 6 p.m. And will you, you won't have any trouble making these meetings, would you? No, any, uh, after, after work, that's my time. That's good. That's yeah. good. After after work, that's my personal time and how I choose to 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 do. Uh, and, and this is a passion now for me because right. I can't I can't believe people cut down trees. I just don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have anything else. How about you, Marcia? I had to mute myself because my pup was barking in the background. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, I just am really glad, Pam. Be, I just think that you'll bring a, a real strength to this group and, and never keep on questioning 
what the city needs to do to sustain uh, our urban forest, okay? Because it is a challenge and it is a challenge for homeowners. So I think you're a good voice there. So thank you for uh, being asked to be appointed. And I guess Shrad, well, we'll be voting on this next Monday then? Yes. Okay. You'll be contacted by the office here, Pam. Okay, great. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. And thank you for the opportunity uh, to make a difference. And I, it took me a long time to figure out where I would best you know, put my efforts and I think I found it, so. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. Hey, do we have any other interviews then? I mean, any other people ready for interviewing? No one's on the call yet, but we did have two scheduled. That's what I saw on my agenda. Okay. Well, so where are you at, Marsha? Uh, this meeting's being streamed, so I'd rather not say at this point. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. Looks like you're in Hawaii. <laughs> Actually, the picture is from uh, the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Okay. Okay, and there are incredible, that's all there are, are trees. Trees and bears. No wolves? No, I, I don't think there's wolves. There are elks. Uh, there's probably pretty much everything in here. Uh, Lots of birds, but the bears yes, are things you have to be really careful of. During my service time, I spent some of my time out in uh, Colorado. Yeah, I there's everything there. I mm -hmm. had everything. Well, I've seen some bears are closer than what I would like to see them, so. Well, I ate food out there, Marsha, that I didn't eat till I went to service, <laughs> like snakes. Mm -hmm. huh? You were hungry, you ate, it, you ate it, okay? I know we were on maneuvers. Uh, it was about 150 miles from our, no, 57 miles from our camp. And we had a walk there up, straight up the mountain. And uh, we got one hot meal a week. And they would bring that up on mules on a Sunday. And uh, I know this one time somebody shook something and scared the mules and they got over the mountain and well, they told us, if we want to eat, go get it. Or there's a lot of snakes here and there's a lot of fish. Well, we ate that for a week. Shrimp, I mean, fish and uh, sna uh, snakes. So how do you like being back in uh, City Hall? Fine. Yeah. I know we won't be able to use council chambers for a while yet, so. Well, I don't think it's gonna to be too long. Yeah, we just have to have it set up for our hybrid meeting. Yeah. How, how, how has the weather been? Uh, are you having a lot of thunderstorms today? not storms they tell us we're going to get storms and nothing it's just little drizzle i've been going out to the stadium for every game and it gets so hot out there you can't breathe you can't yeah, humidity breathe. really does it that really yeah. makes it hard but uh, the other week last week one day they had over nine thousand spectators that was that was the highest attendance of any ballpark in the minor leagues in the country. Well, it's great people want to come out to those games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a question for Charlie. Do we have the other people that we didn't see at our last meeting rescheduled, I think for the Youth Commission? Yeah, I was going to ask you that. They're going to be, I'm going to contact them for the next meeting. Okay. So I'm trying to fill them in as I go. I don't want to ignore the other boards 
and commissions gotcha. either. So I'm trying to get them in together. Is Martinez. This is Michael McDonald. You're me. You're he me. I don't know who the other one is. Oh, Carlos. I believe you helped me. I have them. Three. I think he uh, withdrew. I have the ones from last. I have the paperwork from last week. Okay. So this is, this is 415. And who is this? Michael McDevitt. He's applied for HARB. Okay. Good evening, Mike. And how are you? I'm doing fine. Mike, I think I know you too, and I can't place you. This is <laughs> Councilman Marlboro. I've been around for a while. Let's put it that way. Familiar okay. face. Well, <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> I'm not wanted anywhere. <laughs> Okay, tell us why you're interested in serving on the harm, please. Well, uh, I've always worked in the city. Uh, I've, I've worked in the city, I guess you could say, since like 1979. Uh, my first job was with Great Valley Savings Association on North Fifth Street. So I've uh, ever, ever since that day, I've, I've been... Uh, working in the city. Uh, I now live in the city. I've lived in the city now for probably, I'm going to say eight to 10 years. I, I own a, a property down here on South Fifth Street, 116 South Fifth Street. Uh, and I moved in there. I have an apartment up on the second floor. And then my business is in the second floor in the rear. It's a uh, real estate appraisal business. So, uh, but I've been I've been wanting to get involved uh, in something. Uh, I've been, uh, and this is something I think that would would kind of fit in with my expertise and yes, it does. knowledge of the city and stuff like that. I'm familiar with what the historic districts are, and do you have any suggestions right now on what you would like to see? take place on this board? Can you say that again, please? Any suggestions? Not really. I, I you know, my, my intention is if, if I'm elected to the position is to basically uh, attend some of the meetings and get the, get the gist of how the board works. And, and from that point, then I hope I can be, uh, you know, contribute. Uh, in other words, let's play ball. Let's get to the game and see how the game is played, right? I, I guess that would be it. We'll, we'll participate in the game then. Well, I hope, I'm, I'm sure you'll be an asset to the board with your background. We need somebody like you on the board. Thank okay? you. Okay. And if you ever have any suggestions, feel free to bring them up. Okay. You don't think you'll have any problems making the meetings Yeah, I think the meetings are what on a Tuesday. I'm Tuesday. Not, I don't have the paperwork in front of me, but it's the third Tuesday of the month. Yeah, no, that would be. I don't think that we would be a problem for me at all. Okay. Okay, Marcia, your turn. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Michael. Glad to see you. Nice to see you. Okay, and Harb has been a real asset to the city. It's also been. A challenge, uh, I think, for a lot of people that don't understand the HARP guidelines and they go and do the work without permission and act like they don't know that they've done it without permission. Any thoughts that you can say about engaging the community more in understanding the importance of HARP? Well, uh, I think that the reason people do what, do what they do is because there is that mentality that, you know, I'm going to do it and then if I get caught, you know, then I'll say, I'm sorry, that type of thing. But uh, I mean, I don't know, it, 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 unless you, you know, send literature out to the different property owners, you know, on a regular basis, uh, that's, a, I think the only way you're gonna, you're gonna keep the, uh, that information in front of them. Uh, I think, you know, not everybody reads the newspaper. So, you know, advertising in the newspaper or something like that, I don't know that, that would really work. I know that uh, living in the historic district, I know that whenever I have work done here at my property, right. uh, 
The contractors know about it. Yeah, so the contractors have to be told by whoever owns the property that they expect them to follow HARP guidelines. Yes. If the right. property owner doesn't say that, then they're gonna do whatever might be most uh, inexpensive. Well, that's true too. Yeah. If I may, I'm sorry, Marsha, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, and just to explain the role of counsel is if someone uh, is been told by HARB that they're in non-compliance and they want to appeal it, they appeal to city council. And then we have hearings and listen to both sides of the story. And HARB is under the obligation to follow the federal guidelines. They don't have any choice in that. Council can overrule that if we choose to, depending on the situation. Uh, we would rather not have to do that, but it's part of the process. Okay. I know, uh, you know, I, I've observed some things being done on South Fifth Street where, you know, they've done complete restoration of buildings. And I'm pretty sure that, uh, let's just talk about the windows and stuff like that. Uh, I don't think that they're they're complying with having wood sash windows. Uh, but then again, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know the approval process at, at this point either. But, uh, you know, so I, I, like I said, I, I think there, I, I've got a learning curve I've got to go right. through. Uh, so I, I know exactly what is expected. Yeah, and I think that's a very good point because I know as a council person, I had to learn a lot in order to be able to sit in on the hearings and understand that. And then, uh, of course, understanding hard what their role is, what we can do and how we make sure the history or the historic nature of the city is preserved with, of course, the fact there are a lot of new building materials that aren't the originals, but, you know, so there's a lot of uh, different variations, but I'm glad you, it seems like you're aware and know what you need to do as far as getting up to speed. Mm -hmm. I'm okay, Strad. I can turn it back over to you. Just one question, uh, Mike. What do you think of the idea if you, if a realtor is selling a home? Okay, they should have material that they can give to the buyer on what they what the, the city is expecting them from them. In regards well, to I, I know that, you know, there are situations where uh, there are pamphlets like on lead-based paint and stuff like that, that, that uh, a realtor is, is uh, obligated to, you know, to give to the seller and give to the buyer. Uh, I think that that's really the only pamphlet that they're um, obligated to, to hand out. Uh, I don't know that you could really make it their obligation to, to do that. I, I, you, could, you could try to maybe work with the, uh, with the real estate board and, and see if they would be willing to, uh, you know, to help out in, that, in that, doing that type of a thing. I bring this up because every time there's a violation and we are sitting there listening to the parties coming in, objecting to the findings of, of the board, we always ask them, were you notified by the realtor? And they say, no, we knew nothing about it. Now that could be an excuse. <laughs> I, I think a lot of times it probably is, you know, yes. they're going to, they're going to sit there and they're going to point fingers at each other. And, you know, the, the buyer or of the property is going to, you know, say, no, we were never told. And, you know, the realtor would probably say, well, yeah, I did tell them, but you know, I, unless it's, you know, in writing or something like that. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I know that uh, I don't get involved in too many sales per se. I do mostly real estate appraisal work. So it, I'm not uh, too familiar with the, uh, with the process. I know that, uh, that uh, in some of the transactions where I was involved in the sale, uh, you had to get the, uh, uh, the compliance, the property had to comply or something like that. It was, uh, yep. you had to get it approved, I guess, uh, for sale. And, and I guess, well, but that was basically a, just kind of like an exterior inspection done by the, probably the property maintenance department or something like that. 
Well, we need somebody like you with your background and knowledge to help out on this board. Not that they need help, but you're, you're gonna be an asset and well, you'll be hearing from us. Okay. So thanks for applying. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Am I done? You're yeah, you can say Marshall. goodbye. <laughs> okay, I'll say goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Right. Yep, bye-bye. Strat, I have a question for you then. I will I guess maybe check, check with Shelly to see whether our person from four o'clock has uh, come on. He has not. And I've been checking my email and he's not sent me any kind of correspondence either. Potter. Yeah. Go ahead, Marsha. Okay, my question is now that we're going virtual, are we still gonna be doing the interviews virtual? Uh, rather than expecting folks to come into City Hall? That's what I would recommend. Um, because Even though City Hall's open to the public, the meeting rooms, um, you know, unless you want to sit up on the third floor in the conference room, it's, it's Wouldn't it be not appropriate to ask room. them? Ask who? The applicants. Would they prefer coming in here? No. No? No. Linda's, yeah, Linda's saying no from the next room. Okay, that's all. I just wanted to clarify that so we're all yeah, okay. It's, it's a lot of orchestration. Okay, no problem. For that. Okay. Yeah, this is okay. Oh, sorry for the sirens. That's what happens when you're at 8th and Washington. Indeed. I most likely am, uh, that's what I was asking about thunderstorms. There's none today though. You haven't heard from this gentleman. No, there's nothing in my email. He didn't call today either. So no. I can reschedule him as well. Mike Carter, uh, Carter. Carter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there anything else, Strat? For this meeting? Okay. Then I uh, can take a little break between now and the next meeting. I have something I need to answer, but I don't want to put it on the air. Okay. Well, I okay. think uh, okay. Shelly could end the recording and then we could discuss it. Correct. You ready? You want to adjourn? Yeah.